Bonjour. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome on OHS Forum. You're already familiar with this forum. It was launched last April 6th, and today it is the operational launch of the international working groups. I need to remind you that this is a group approach. It's inclusive. It's uh, cross uh, and multidisciplinary. This is the key of uh, One Health. We analyze uh, human, animal, and environmental uh, health. Last April, we told you that we would actually launch different international working groups. But before that, we have uh, a key message from uh, the FAO and uh, the WHS. I would like to thank you for inviting me to address you today. Our world is facing increasing threats from the risk of epidemics and pandemic, climate crisis and environmental contamination, biodiversity losses and ecosystem degradation, among others. Natural resources are under pressure due to a growing world population and sustainable agri-food system and the rapid urbanization. If left unchecked, this global challenge will have a devastating consequences for humankind and our capacity to feed the world. The complexity and the interconnectedness of the ch challenges require the broad paradigm shift, embracing structural solutions with a great emphasis on upstream prevention we must rethink our relationship with nature. We need to embrace collaboratively, collectively, and a multi-sector and a transdisciplinary approach to move ahead forward. We must build a partnership, alliance, and coalitions for science-based and green solutions to transform our agri-food systems and keep our planet healthier. This effort are crucial for achieving the 2030 Sustainable Development Goal Agenda with the overall bandit of ending hunger and elevating poverty. Underpinned by the aspiration for better production, better nutrition, a better environment, and a better life, leaving no one behind. FAO promotes the transformation to more efficient resilient, inclusive, and sustainable agri-food systems. One Health as a systematic approach links human, animal, plant, and the environment health. It seeks the optimal balance across the sectors and systems, prevent the long-term health risk to people and animals, achieve the food security, and preserve natural resources. The approach is gaining traction as a core strategic area within FL for better species. And we are working with OIE, WHO, plus UNEP, and others on the developing a global plan of action on One Health. The plan is a joint commitment for collective action to implement One Health at global, regional, and national levels. Our timeline is ambitious, but agency and the political willingness shall prepare us to move fast to ensure sustainable one health for all. Thank you. Nous venons d'entendre le directeur général de la FAO exprimer l'importance, l'urgence de travailler de façon transversale sur les enjeux de la santé. Cette santé qui prend en He just repeated the uh, necessity to have a cross uh, and interdisciplinary approach. We have another uh, message from the General Director of the World Health Organization. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends, my thanks to Secretary General Benoit Miribel for the invitation to say a few words. The health of humans, animals, and planetary ecosystems are closely intertwined. 
Changes in this balance can be a catalyst and a threat multiplier, exacerbating the growing global burden of both infectious and non-communicable diseases. The recognition of this interdependence has prompted the search for solutions using a One Health approach that addresses the intersection and interdependence of humans, animals, and the environment, including climate change. The emergence of COVID-19 has underlined the need to strengthen the One Health approach, as well as promoting a healthy and green recovery from the pandemic. Until now, implementation of this approach at the country level has not been sufficient. We need to better operationalize policy responses, strengthen country capacities, and better monitor risks and preparedness for early detection and response to emerging pathogens of animal origin. At WHO, we have established an organization-wide initiative on One Health. We're also working on a multidisciplinary initiative with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the Organization of Animal Health, and the UN Environmental Programme to convene a One Health high-level panel of experts. Working together, we can build the safer, healthier, and greener world we all want. I thank you. Voilà, vous venez d'entendre deux messages de soutien. You've just heard two very important messages um, from the FAO director and the WHO um, director. Obviously, we need to react urgently, but we also need to work in the midterm in order to find a global health answers. You are connected and this YouTube channel live for the launch of uh, the operational launch of our uh, forum. They will be presented in details. First and foremost, I'll ask Stephanie Sedou, French ambassador, to join us and to answer our questions. Okay, Stephanie, we know that uh, France actually supports uh, the efforts of uh, those UN agencies in order to have a high-level uh, expert committee. I would like to draw your attention that if we are not wearing masks, uh, that's either because we have been vaccinated or uh, because uh, we have been tested negative. Some uh, people will join us live, others will join us um, from abroad. As far as we are concerned, we are not wearing masks because we are respecting the uh, measures that are necessary. Stephanie, we heard you last April, uh, you encouraged our approach. Um, there's more and more experts who are questioning what we're doing, but first and foremost, what about those UN agencies that France and Germany and other countries invited to join a high-level uh, uh, expert panel? Okay, thank you very much uh, for your invitation. I'm very happy to take part in the operational launch of this uh, One Sustainable Health Forum. It's a great dynamic. We were together last November in Berlin for a first launch, and that was last uh, October 26, absolutely. That was uh, with the World Health Summit. So, short than a year later, it is the concrete start of this forum. 
And indeed, what is interesting and important is that everybody is committed and we have uh, some commitment from the top directors, the top members of those uh, agencies. And France uh, was with Germany uh, at the forefront of this initiative. It was launched in uh, France and in Germany with uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian and his uh, German counterpart for the creation of an expert panel to work on the One Health approach. It was set up last May, so two months ago, with 26 high-level experts whose mission will be to advise the decision makers uh, while analyzing the data that is available and making sure that they can be communicated and understood by the general public. Our significant um, approach is that this effort is joined by the four key UN agencies, the two we've just uh, listened to, FAO, the World Health Organization, the uh, OMH, and uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. So it's really the highest level, and it brings us to the political sphere and the political decision makers. Okay, so with this uh, expert, there is one uh, French person, Serge Morin. He will join us later. And he is with uh, Professor uh, Antoine Andremont, a key member, and I invite uh, Professor Andremont to join us. With regards to Serge Morand, we have an expert who is convinced of uh, the importance of this, of this approach. Do you think that this uh, COVID uh, pandemic uh, is leading to the realization for the government of the necessity of this approach? Because Antoine, for example, is, has been convinced for a long time. But is the scientific sphere joining the political one? Obviously, uh, it's a wake-up call. Uh, a brutal one, but a wake-up call because this One Health approach has been carried by France since 2011. Uh, there was a statement back then saying that um, the international health safety was linked to human, animal, environment, um, uh, education, a, a wide panel of disciplines that uh, intersect. And that, that is a global approach. That means solidarity. That means that everybody should have access to those resources. We have a strategy for uh, global health uh, since 2012. We are currently working uh, on this further to the recent developments. And at the political uh, level, the G7 and G20 uh, levels, um, the French president is actually carrying this, uh, this voice, this message to his opposite numbers. So we are contributing to this One Health approach. I would also like to mention a French initiative that is different. Uh, it's Prezod. Prezod is a network of scientists and it was launched by three research institutes, INRA, CIRAD and IRD. 
peut-être dire un mot pour dire combien on a parlé And tout à l'heure du haut panel, du panel d'experts de uh, the One Health uh, panel, that's uh, franco-german, and the link between science and politics. And I would like to stress that the uh, One Sustainable Health uh, Forum is the link between science and the field, the labs and the field. So it's important to have the, those two approaches so that the forum brings together experts, scientists, um, actors in the field with uh, their diverse skills in order to bring together data, experience, and maybe we will learn from them and uh, we will be able to carry those lessons uh, onward and to the level of the decision makers. I believe it is interesting to have uh, such a coordination because there are quite a few initiatives at the moment. They are inspired by their One Health approach. It is important to have a place where all those initiatives uh, can converge to. Absolutely. Uh, it is one of the objectives, and Professor Andromand is following this, uh, uh, this, this approach. And those different approaches are actually a reason to wonder uh, what can be done about our health and, and to understand that whatever we do actually has an effect on our health, be it the, you know, urban planning uh, or, or whatever. And maybe Antoine Andremont can uh, share some uh, information with us. Um, can you tell us a little bit about environmental pollution and the link with health? Yes, absolutely. Uh, with regards to antibiotics, uh, we are learning every day uh, about the impact it can have on the environment. We've all taken antibiotics with a great uh, benefit, but we also know that we use them too much and we use them when we don't necessarily need them and that we feed them to animals. Um, and although this medication uh, actually end up leave end up leaving our our body and end up being in uh, in the environment and we have unfortunately great uh, residues of, uh, of antibiotics in um, in our global environment so it's a different way to look at things. We used to think that uh, once we've taken medication, well, it's over. Well, no, it's not over. They end up in the environment, in fine. And we have to take into account the impact of, for example, antibiotics on the environment. So, we agree, don't we, that we have to link the research to uh, actions in the field. Absolutely. We should have rules, ways to think globally, but also we have to actually um, open the, um, the trunk and see uh, what's, uh, what's underneath. And um, sometimes we have to get our hands dirty. 
not only to preserve environment, but also to preserve the environment, because if we don't preserve the environment, there will be a boomerang effect. So you are convinced that uh, uh, we should be committed to working with those uh, international uh, working groups. You teach medicine. I believe uh, you advocate the, the, the constant uh, questioning. Yeah, I used to be, uh, you know, a children's specialist, and um, I used to, to give them antibiotics, and little by little, you know, my uh, conception um, evolved, my conception of medicine evolved, and um, a global medicine means that whatever we do uh, must be taken into account if we want to preserve humans' health. And we have to look at our impact on the environment in order to do so. Madam Ambassador, um, at the French Foreign Ministry level, how does it work today? Uh, you know, how do you bring all those priorities together? We have here uh, the different logos, uh, the World Health Summit, the uh, One um, Sustainable Health Summit. Um, we are here in Lyon. I believe you will come back to Lyon often. Um, there's uh, the Geneva Health uh, Forum. It's not too far. How do you see and what do you recommend we do before we start uh, working concretely on those uh, working groups? Uh, what are your recommendations to, with regards to the way we should uh, be working together? I, I don't know if I can actually uh, make recommendations to uh, expert scientists, but what is sure and what we are looking forward to and what we expect now that we have experienced COVID-19, uh, the wake-up call I was referring to, and now that we must be smarter and think uh, uh, more widely. We have to be concrete. So we are installing structures. We have scientists who are fully committed to working with us. But the One Health approach is to link all the participants together, starting on one given case, from one given case. So when we work together with communities, with people in villages uh, based on their habits, we have uh, uh, with the IRD, um, the French Research Institute and Development uh, experts. We have people in the field working with locals, not necessarily to, mod uh, to, to, to create a model, but to give the full value to each of those examples and leave a ultra mega global approach to a specific one and if needed we will um, draw a lesson from all this if by the next world health summit in berlin where experts from all over the world will um, meet if we could illustrate further to the work of the different IWGs, illustrate our work, our experience, our, our different formulas, which may not be uh, a, a, a reinvention of the will, but a, a different, uh, a, a, a good practice. If we can give a value to this, then it will be a great step forward. And as uh, Antoine Andermann was saying, we will succeed to progress uh, 
and the, uh, the One Health approach. Organisation, justement, puisque on a une vocation internationale qui nous écoute, qui nous entend, rejoignez ce forum. So it is a collaborative forum. So we welcome all uh, organizations. We actually had a press conference um, this morning here in Lyon with the Pasteur Institute uh, uh, manager, with Vitagro, with uh, IRD uh, directors, with uh, Action Against Hunger uh, and others. We have the Malaria Training Center in Bangladesh. We have Kamel Mouela from the Lebanon. It's a starting point. And we have to see the different flows and uh, where we can connect and how we can connect. We met in Madagascar a few years ago on uh, such a program um, in order to fight the resistance of, uh, of viruses and of uh, local populations. And uh, it was concrete and uh, it's interesting to, to, to look back and to see what worked. It is true that um, in the field, we try to figure out how things work, and in my case, how the use of antibiotics uh, impacted uh, humans and animals and the environment. The difference with the One Health approach is that we do this all at the same time. Basically, we need a dashboard, we need a control room uh, where um, we know uh, what, what's going on. Um, the World Health Organization was extremely proactive uh, in this area and launched a few months ago an indicator that allows us to do that. And I hope that it will be used uh, throughout the world. So it's a first brick of the of the wall of the bridge, and this allows us to see the impact of an action. In my case, it's stemmed from uh, bacteriology, but it was not enough. We need to integrate with this action, it's you know what we call hard science, uh, human sciences, uh, uh, ethnology, sociology, in order to understand for each population what uh, those health interventions mean. As uh, Madam Ambassador Sidhu was saying, if we do not add to our effort in hard sciences this socio-ethnological, geographical and legal approach, we will not be able to seize the uh, problem and transmit it to the local populations so that they can help us. So it is a holistic approach that uh, that we need and that uh, and that we need uh, to be more efficient. So uh, it's not enough. It's a social. It's an economic um, approach. And this is actually the sixth um, uh, working group: the development of One Health uh, practices and resilience within indigenous and other local communities. Uh, let me remind you that uh, we are uh, launching uh, the OSH uh, forum here in Lyon. Uh, between now and when we meet in Berlin in three months' time, uh, you will have three months to work and with other experts, with no label, with no hat. Uh, those experts will be independent. And in parallel, uh, we will have a panel of organizations. And every week, we will uh, see, uh, we are seeing the, the, the interest of different organizations to join us. Just a few words. You mentioned uh, training and education. It is 
is a very important dimension of uh, sharing uh, the results of this uh, forum. You mentioned the creation of the Health uh, Academy of the World Health Organization. It was uh, supported by the President of the French Republic. And, uh, it's great to see that uh, the One Sustainable Health Forum uh, is launched in Lyon because it will create uh, superb synergies with uh, uh, this approach. Thank you, Professor Antoine Andremont. Uh, thank you for coming and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Let's continue with Madam Ambassador Sedou. We are talking about a lot about uh, vaccines. Uh, France is part of the ACTA uh, program. What is the situation today with regards to sharing access to uh, vaccines? And uh, I'll take the opportunity of this break to ask Edvish Coupe to join uh, me uh, here. She will be presenting the different international working groups. So back to my questions um, about you know the shared access to vaccines. France is one of the first partner of the World Fund. Uh, what is the situation today? While the World uh, Fund is uh, committed to ACTA, so it's access to COVID tool accelerator, it's a great initiative that the international community took and France took part you know, from the beginning of the COVID crisis. The objective is to um, allow access uh, to vaccine to different populations around the world. Today, we are fully committed and we have seen the efficiency of donors. France gave a huge number of doses that can be found in about 20 countries. We will be sharing more and more, and um, it took a little bit of time at the beginning, but um, soon enough it will speed up. And the objective for France is that 60 million doses be delivered uh, by the end of the year. Furthermore, another effort is being made to increase the capacity of production in the countries that produce, but also in other places in the world. It is a difficult situation at the moment. Uh, it's difficult to produce, but the forecast is good. We need to be strong for another few weeks. France has asked uh, other countries to come and join us to share the, the, the extra doses they may have with uh, countries that do not have access to uh, vaccine. Thank you for uh, coming. Thank you for sharing uh, this information with us. And thank you, uh, Edwige, uh, Edwige Coupé. Uh, for joining us and launching those groups. Uh, thank you, Abuno Meribel and uh, Stephanie Sedo for this great introduction. Uh, Stephanie, you're the French ambassador for World Health. So, 